Let's get started with vibration manipulation. An extremely popular and destructive ability that allows you to literally control the vector of movement, users of vibrokinesis can create, shape, and manipulate vibrations of any and every kind. There's not a being alive who doesn't know what a vibration is, but if you happen to fall into that category, obviously you have no knowledge of the outside world. Maybe you've been living under a rock or tied up in a basement for years. Either way, I'm not gonna hold it against you. Let me introduce myself properly. Hello, I'm Shay. This right here, this is a blue shirt. And vibrations, in its most simplest of terms, is or are a phenomenon where movement can occur from and around a single concentrated point. I hope that was simple, but yes, users with this ability can create, shape, move, control, interact, and manipulate vibrations, which would probably mean the same thing. But vibrations themselves are normally classified as mechanical phenomenon that can cause movement. Thus, a user of this power can manipulate vibrations in themselves, others, other objects, the environment, or surroundings, etc. This can be done through the ground, water, or to increase their own senses and condition, most commonly by augmenting their combative output, which can cause massive physical damage through pinpoint targeted attacks to weaken or do internal damage, or dramatically increasing small vibrations and turning them into huge seismic tremors, which the effects ranging from tearing down buildings to pulverizing continents. And because the idea of a vibration is a very overreaching, over arching overreaching concept which is going to go with overreaching and a phenomenon that affects nearly everything on a physical level <laughs> don't think you guys are free from it either because you're not even as i sit here bombarding you bombastically with my badass baritones beating back your boredom and mimicking barry white while driving you ballistic okay shay we get it sheesh but yes <laughs> he's got a point if you were able to hear that crap he said you my wonderful nerd and nerdette are being affected by vibrations so <laughs> what do you do well, here's a thought I just shook loose, pun definitely intended. How about you place your pulse-laden fingers on that like and subscribe button and go ahead and push it. Not only will this alert you to when I upload a new video, but, and I know this sounds hard to believe, but you're actually using vibrations to help send a signal to the YouTube algorithm through the press of that button. Trust me, it'll end up helping me out a lot more than you guys realize. And by you using your powers to help me, that technically makes you a superhero. So, be my hero, no academia, and hit that like and subscribe button. But if you're rather careful with who you want to help, then, well, I, I get it, you know, it sucks sometimes, but that's just the way life is. But at least hit that share button. If you're just here for the applications, associations, uses, and users for this power, then skip ahead to this time. But if you're ready to get your Harlem shake on, yeah, I just said that. Then let's get this party started. I, I can't believe I just said that. The origins of vibrations can be conflated with different things, but it does have an origin of study, I guess, that began around the 6th century with the ancient Greek philosopher Pythagoras. Yeah, the Pythagoras theorem guy that you learned about in school. I'm pretty sure we all grew up hating him. But he just started the first known studies. The true origin is one that began at the beginning of the known universe with the Big Bang. <laughs> we all know what that is. The simple movement of atoms that would later merge and become molecules, which would then combine to form compounds that would in turn become substances and then eventually elements started with vibrations. Now, exactly how and why it happened, that can be argued all day. But what can't be argued is the essence behind the origin of this concept, which is energy and movement. Or if you want to look at it vice versa, vibrations cause movement, which then causes energy. While myth and legends understood vibrations in its more tangible conceptual forms, such as sound, music, and certain forms of concussive force. And obviously these concepts have their various interpretive entities that are believed to represent them. But <laughs> getting away from the fantastical and the astronomical view, when we look at things like sound and or music or reactional forces in a more grounded manner, this still gives us plenty of information to draw from, which explains why in modern times we have a field of science referred to as cymatics, which is the study of wave phenomena and vibrations. In addition to that, acoustics is the interdisciplinary science that deals with the study of mechanical waves in gases, liquids, and solids, aka vibrations. This shows us that vibrations also spread out to categories of regular sound, ultrasound, 
and infrasound. But it doesn't stop there. The applications of vibrations are found in almost all aspects of modern society, <laughs> included but not limited to the medical field, various industrial fields that make up the backbone of any given society, well, any stable society, and heck, I'll say it, even horology, which is the study of time, aka watches and clocks. So with all that being said, let's get the factual mumbo jumbo out the way. Let's, let's just get this out of here. Like stated numerous times before, a vibration is a mechanical phenomenon whereby oscillations, back and forth movement, occur around an equilibrium point and usually spread outward from said centralized point. <laughs> the mechanical ways that can later be classified and interpreted as vibrations can travel through all forms of matter, gases, liquids, solids, and plasmas. And typically the matter that supports the vibration is normally called the medium. And just like you learned in school, I hope, vibrations and other similar concepts like waves and or sound travel faster through solids than through liquids and gases because the molecules of a solid are closer together, basically meaning that it can transmit the vibrations, aka the energy, faster between each molecule. But when vibrations move through a medium that doesn't have a consistent physical property or properties, it can be refracted or redirected by either absorption or dispersal. And to uh, continue from that point, it would make sense that vibrations cannot travel through or exist in a vacuum or a void, aka space with no matter in between. But technically, this isn't really true either. Not only do vibrations cause movement and through that movement, sound, force, pressure, temperature, energy, and numerous other phenomena that are powers of their own, but the waves of movement that we call vibrations exist in higher and lower order of magnitudes or levels, if you want to get simple with it, that we can classify as frequencies. And all a frequency is, is the rate or speed at which a vibration occurs, and from that constitute whether it can be viewed as a long wavelength or a short wavelength based on how much energy it has. This can be done through a material, as in sound waves, or an electromagnetic field, as in radio waves and light. And they're usually measured in per second and are expressed in values of hertz. <laughs> Vibrations, just like any other concept-based power, have a love and hate relationship with us humans, though, as is necessary for life, obviously, but too much of it could be considered a bad thing, if it's not used right. And a common consensus for most or that most can agree on, is that bad things usually get in the way of advancement. And there are many cases where, you know, vibrations are viewed as undesirable because it either wastes energy or creates unwanted sound or causes massive damage due to like natural disasters like earthquakes or the effects of a meteor crash or something like that. So this has caused humans to more or less figure out a way to placate this concept via technological advancement. So it could be said, I'll bet, arguably, Although vibrations symbolically represent potential danger, you know, the water shaking in a glass cup, they also represent movement, progression, and energy, or life. And those symbolic meanings explain why it's common for you to hear people interchange the word vibration or vibrations with the word frequency, wave, or wavelength. Because like stated earlier, they're pretty much interconnected and mean the same thing. And the concept behind vibrational frequency or the oscillation wavelength thingy that I just talked about before has been taken and cranked up to 11 in both world culture and popular culture. As stated by Nikola Tesla, if you wanna find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. So basically, if you wanna look at it this way, everything can be explained away as a form of vibrations. <laughs> the movement of matter? Well, at its core, it can be thought to be started from the vibration of atoms at an atomic level or lower, which then produces enough energy to start a reaction. Well, how about communication across long and short distances? Well, thanks to air and eardrums, tin cans with string, and later the electromagnetic spectrum, vibrations can travel across all these mediums in order to transfer information. Okay, well what about what we can see, feel, and experience? Well, thanks to the electromagnetic spectrum that we mentioned earlier, we know that various forms of visible light, aka energy, exist, moving or vibrating along a specific frequency, aka hertz. And those that are of a too high or too low shift cannot be recognized by our naked eyes. <laughs> and obviously, I don't need to tell you guys that sounds are mechanical waves that mostly affect hearing and are caused by vibrations. And just how visible light exists at and on different wave shifts, you bet sound follows the same rules. But that's all I'm going to say about that. Anymore, I'll get into sound manipulation. <laughs> and well, you guys know the deal by now. Expect a video on that. So no matter where you go, if an environment supports life, and heck, even if it don't, you can't escape vibrations because even if they somehow aren't coming from the outside universe to affect you, they're still coming to affect you and everything else. So with the universe being a giant, ever-expanding, 
vibrating echo chamber, I guess. It would make sense that from what we can discover logically about this concept, numerous illogical and in a more positive view, unproven esoteric ideas have been generated. This brings us to the associated phrases or idioms that refer to reading a person's intentions and character without actually having to get to know them. For example, they claim that certain emotions and thought patterns such as joy, peace, and acceptance created higher frequencies of vibrations that attracted others to them, while in the inverse, having negative emotions could have the opposite effect. Personally, I have no idea if it works or not, could be because uh, between you and me, normally, I just check to see if the person I'm trying to guesstimate stabs a puppy or something. That way I definitely know he's a sinister. Yeah, that's not the best way to gauge someone's intentions. I might need to look into reading someone's vibrations. But nowadays we keep the same spirit of the metaphor alive by referring to a person or thing as having good or bad vibes. Or it can be used as a way to display understanding, verbally. An example being someone walking up to you and saying that they're on the same wavelength as you. It can even be used in the negative to describe someone who acts, thinks, or exists in a way that's unfamiliar to what you're used to. You know, that particular individual is said to exist outside the normal wavelength of society. That might have been a stretch, but anyway. Form of enhanced strength or enhanced speed in order to create massive shockwaves of energy or unblockable pulses of energy which can create air pressure based on effects and enters into the domain of air manipulation. But this ability can also mimic the effects of electricity manipulation by sending a current of vibrations through a target. But it doesn't stop there. You can also mimic the effects of heat and or fire manipulation by vibrating enemies into disintegration. But it's common to see this power be the result of technology use in any form, or it can be channeled through a weapon like a blade to achieve the vibro sword effect or the vibro blade, whatever you want to call it, which is a blade that vibrates at such a high speed, it cuts through anything else like butter. It can even be used to achieve a form of intangibility like members of the Flash family are known to do from DC Comics. Mind you, is a product of oscillation. There's that word again. If you want to know more about intangibility or any of the powers I mentioned, check out my video on those. The link is in the description. Another thing too, it could also be possible for a user of this power to stimulate nerves and organic biological pathways through vibrations and increase healing or deal with pain. And to top it all off, they could use this ability as a form of a focalized pulse, like a CAT scan or some kind of medical scanning technology machine thing on my boobas, and abuse that to be able to locate hidden objects and or status effects. And that last one leads more into echolocation, which is a form of enhanced senses. So if you want more information on that video, check it out. The link is in the description. And as an added bonus, since vibrations can travel through the ground, air, water, or any form of medium, AKA matter, one, this gives the user a form of enhanced senses either through vibrational or seismic sense, or they can match the frequency of whatever wavelength you want to be able to see or hear in. Remember the hertz from earlier. As a side note, this is where the hidden world trope comes from. You know, a world that seems normal but has another world that exists on the same plane and is still analogous with our own. They normally don't share the same space, but they possess beings that reside on that particular wavelength that can't be seen or observed unless you copy the vibrational frequency and thus mimic whatever energy they exist on. A lot of story mediums use this as the explanation for why we can't see ghosts or certain psychic phenomena. It's it's all vibrations, baby. And two, defense by using physical barriers is extremely difficult, if not impossible, because vibrations can also affect things at a molecular level and cause movement because that's what it does. Something else notable about this ability is that in real life or any kind of medium with any real world realism like our own, versions of this ability would be very awesome, but extremely impractical, seeing as that shockwave would practically level everything within a spherical radius from the vibration user, <laughs> including themselves. This would require the user to possess unusually high levels of required secondary superpowers, such as re super resilient eardrums, equilibrium enhancement due to vertical inducement, and enhanced strength and durability, and oftentimes a little bit of luck because this power can and definitely will get out of hand if that aspect of this ability gets ignored. I'm talking about shake up the planet level of get out of hand. Common stats for this extremely popular and widely used ability are medium to high levels of attack power, medium to high levels of speed, and medium to low levels of defense because this is arguably an extremely offensive power. But you know the saying, 
A great offense is a great defense. So if you want to go that route, you can. As far as I could find, or at least do with an extensive internet search, there aren't really any colors associated with vibrations themselves. Well, at least in the sense of other powers that I've done. But oftentimes, vibrational wavelengths are associated with the color of violet and or white, which <laughs> anyway, this is usually used to showcase its otherworldly properties, I guess, but the power itself, for all intents and purposes, is invisible, which is why it's normally displayed in popular culture as rippling waves of invisible energy or an invisible force, something mimicking a sonar-like effect or a pulse-like emission. You know, it starts off at a concentrated point and spreads outward. If being used on something solid, it'll show visible cracks or a wave-like ripple accompanied by an explosion of disturbed matter, or the infamous screen shake, which is the number one signifier that you're dealing with a user of this power. So no matter how you choose to portray it, unless for a plot relevant reason, will normally have a wide range of effect, but there are examples of more pinpoint and concentrated portrayals of sonar burst or blast, I guess, which I said before. It'll normally start off small and then dissipate outward from that initial point, just like the larger versions. I mean, all that energy has to go somewhere. Characters with this ability will normally be seen as energetic, loud, bold, and usually very impulsive. They might have an influence that's far reaching and uh, <clears throat> penetrating, as there really isn't any form of hiding that you can do from someone who has this power. If they can't find you stealthily, they can just flush you out with force and destroy everything around you. Now with the power to control vibrations comes the natural ability to attack with, defend with, and control vibrations with vibration attacks. The user can use vibrations to manipulate outside objects in a push or pull manner. There, if one had the most basic levels of control over vibrations, even at the lowest of levels, it would still give the user an affinity to allow them to detect any source of vibrations emitting from anything via vibration detection. This ability branches off into many others, such as the ability to detect various audio wavelengths via sound detection. Or, by using Mother Earth herself as a medium, the user can detect the most minute of movements because vibrations travel faster and better through a solid with seismic sense. And since all the previously mentioned give the user a way to uh, extend their sensory capabilities, we can slap enhanced senses on that because that's what those applications are more or less doing for you. The next step up from vibrational detection is the ability to create your own source of vibrations completely separate from outside sources with vibration generation. That seemingly simple application is a lot more complex than we give it credit for. Because when generating vibrations, all you're doing is causing atoms to move back and forth around a central point via molecular oscillation. There's that word again. And if you guys didn't know that controlling the speed of molecules is essentially controlling its temperature via the manipulation of potential energy to kinetic energy, <gasps> faster moving molecules means higher temperatures and more energy, and slower moving molecules means lower temperatures and less energy. So. Doing that with vibrations would give the user a form of thermal manipulation. The only place to go from here is up, as in upping the movement speed of the atoms via molecular acceleration, which just like the name suggests can grant the user a form of enhanced speed. I mean, that's literally what acceleration means, so. <laughs> or the inverse, you can decide that things are moving too fast and you want to send out a counter frequency that can decrease the amount of energy around the molecules, eventually slowing them down with molecular deceleration. And uh, uh, hmm. as a bonus, we might as well add speed manipulation. I haven't done a video on speed manipulation exactly. I've covered enhanced speeds, kind of the same thing. But if you guys want one on speed manipulation, let me know. But from there, I mean, well, let's be honest here, nerd and nerdettes. If you slow down the movement of molecules, you'll have a better chance of them sticking together and staying together, giving the vibrations a form of mass and solidity with vibration solidification. <laughs> and what happens if you pack the molecules so tightly together and really don't give them the freedom to move like they did before? Well, you definitely be able to give them a shape both simple and or complex with vibrokinetic constructs. Well, since you can harness vibrations in the previous manners listed, unless you like the feeling of being shaken like a martini and not stirred, then at the next level up, vibration defiance should give you the ability to withstand any form of harmful Harlem shaking. 
so you don't develop shake and shea syndrome and thus place you on a way higher tier than the previously mentioned applications because users of this ability can basically move in any manner they see fit up down left right even through other objects so with the ability to look hostile vibrations in the face and laugh take your mockery a step further and actually take in outside wavelengths or frequencies targeted towards you of any type and form with vibration absorption and since you can absorb the shaking and the shattering it would make sense that it would be able to have an effect on your physical form and if you're lucky a beneficial one with vibration empowerment at this level you can take the concept of creating vibrations to the next level and actually emit them over a wider range with better control via vibration emission or if you want to go the other route you can completely no sell anyone or anything who tries to use this ability against you in a manner way more specific and precise than molecular deceleration because if you stop vibrations you're essentially stopping most if not all forms of movement with vibration negation and as an added bonus that everyone knows but i'll mention anyway if you were able to channel vibrations through a medium <laughs> any medium at various different amplitudes and or frequencies you'll be able to create one of the most primal forms of transferring information that has ever exist with sound manipulation that's as far as i'm gonna go with that higher tier users of this ability have the potential to dive deeper than most literally and harness their body's own source of wave creation and amplify it to perform numerous effects with bodily vibration manipulation that power can open the door for numerous applications. For example, you could use vibrations to overstimulate your body's natural processes, which would increase your healing and regenerative capabilities with vibrational healing. If you decide to take in the vibration your body produces and then infuse them into your own natural life energy, it can and will give you a vibration aura or take that concept and run with it and transform your physical form into waves of vibrational energy with vibration mimicry. Shift this power outward and infuse it into whatever combative capabilities you possess via vibrokinetic combat. With that application, you could branch off onto or into other power. Pulse manipulation in particular allows you to create or control a disturbance or a ripple effect that can travel through a medium from one point to another. This is seen or portrayed as something that's more of a micro effect, something that affects the internals of the medium and being seen as more subtle. While shockwave manipulation and or generation is accomplished by the immense release of pressure from either waves, aka pulses, of compression and or waves, aka pulses, of massive impact and is definitely seen as a macro effect or something that affects the large scale or the outside. And all that destruction and pure physical energy that you're going to produce as a side effect of the previously mentioned ability can also be seen as generating massive force with concussive force generation if the user is a dick or accidentally trips or something along those lines and makes contact with the ground they can channel vibrations through the earth itself and cause their own natural disasters with earthquake generation and since they can overpower the natural vibrations that the planet itself produces with their own and as a byproduct create earthquakes it would make sense that the user has seismic energy immunity. So we'll just go ahead and add that too, can't hurt. While the best of the best, those that have mastered this ability to its fullest and beyond have no natural limit to this power and they can take molecular acceleration and crank it up to infinity and beyond. The user can cause vibrations that not only empower said vibration, but continue on to jumpstart other vibrations who will then turn around and stimulate the previously empowered vibration in an eternal loop of, if you help me, I'll help you back. This has the potential to reach infinite speeds with accelerated vibration through this ability you can mimic other superpowers such as sharpness manipulation by channeling vibrations into an object or by manipulating the molecules of said object and give the chosen weapon an unnatural and unbeatable edge but if they want to accomplish the same thing but troll their opponent all they have to do is match the frequency that the target is vibrating at i know hippie speak 
and then create a counter vibrational wave that disrupts the target's defense to you in any way, shape, or form because you're essentially mimicking their wavelength of life. This allows your attacks to be especially effective against them with transonic resonance. If they don't want to actually fight at all, then just use your vibration detecting mentioned way back in order to find the rhythm, aka pulse, aka life, aka as in their ability to exist. This can either make them drop dead from a variety of bodily issues all the way to disintegrating or vanishing them from existence with counter vibration. If they choose, they can vibrate their molecules so fast that it can slip through and around other objects via intangibility. And they can produce vibrations with such power it can propel themselves through the air defying the counteracting forces of the planet such as gravity, friction, or inertia via vibrokinetic flight. FYI, this can be done with intangibility too. And lastly, vibrate you or yourself or your surrounding molecules so fast that they slip out of rhythm with the rest of reality, which can allow you to create a wormhole or portals to cover vast distances without occupying the space in between via vibrokinetic portal creation. And there you have it, vibration manipulation in a nutshell. Jesus, that was a lot to get through. This is an extremely powerful and necessary ability under the right conditions. And that number one condition usually being a medium, any medium. So because waves can travel nearly anywhere and exist nearly on every spectrum, ranging from electromagnetic waves, which cause sight, sonar waves, which cause sound and hearing, down to natural disasters like tidal waves, earthquakes, or a heartbeat, not that much of a natural disaster, you can run around pretty much unchecked with this power. Although the spreading of vibrational waves can be disrupted by a lack of material or a material that doesn't have the internal consistency needed to propagate your vibrations. So users of void or vacuum manipulation can cause stagnation or the cessation of movement in any shape or form and are natural enemies for a user of this power, along with the occasional speed manipulator. And that ability can take the form of many different powers, which I will not get into. Because like I said before, it's pretty much a well-known fact that movement is where this ability lives and breathes. However, you might be unable to create vibrations and only manipulate it from outside sources, <laughs> which would, that would really suck because I'm creating vibrations right now just by talking to you and I don't even have powers. So if you can't do this and you have the actual power, then you might need to find a new line of work. I'm not saying anything, I'm just whatever. But in addition to pumping out vibrations, 50 Shades of Shea is happy to announce that things have more or less gotten a lot more flexible. But we can call this video the unofficial start to 50 shades of shea season two woo yeah i know i know a tank get a tank get a think of it much all of this is due to the support of you wonderful nerd and nerdettes but i have even more news not only can you guys expect consistent weekly uploads on this channel without fail but I've also figured out how to brand myself a little better in order to benefit you guys, leading me to create an Instagram, Twitter, and a Patreon account where you can watch Power Analysis, Super Powered Shorties, Shorts, and additional but originally animated content about some of the most popular powers in existence way before it's released on YouTube. So for those of you that have a hankering for new powers but don't want to wait in line on YouTube, then this right here will be a fix. YouTube's still a great platform to connect with you guys, but the copyright rigmarole makes it a little difficult to fully explain power analysis the way I want to, you know, without going back and editing the script and cutting content. I've had to cut a lot of stuff out of previous videos because of that reason. But I really get it. The creator can do whatever they want with their creations. I'm a little hypocritical when it comes to fear. So I don't really have any complaints. So what this basically means is if you come across a weirdly edited video here and there, which I will try to avoid, don't worry about it. You can find the OG version on Patreon. Plus the support allows me to knock out videos way faster and get to the more complicated powers you guys want me to cover. I don't have a problem doing them. It just takes a lot of time. So if you guys want to support, then the links are in the description. I'm really excited for these next series of videos. They're going to slap. Like, really, you guys will definitely like them. And last, but certainly not least, a gift for those who've supported me and will continue to support me on YouTube, my Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages will have a monthly calendar schedule-like thingamapoodle 
will definitely let you know what superpower I'll be covering next and on the days that they're going to drop for that month. <laughs> that way we'll both benefit. So stay tuned. And now, with all that out of the way, it's time to place this ability on the scale. Vibration manipulation is pretty dang useful considering how our existence more or less relies on it. So, with no more extra filler, on a scale of 1 to 10, the Shea scaling system gives this power a shaking, that was a little on the nose, 9.5. Not only because it relies on the existence of other mediums in order for it to exist in the first place, but considering what I said before, this concept still can exist anywhere, even in the vacuum of space, because light exists there, so. Thanks for watching. You guys think of any more applications for this power, jot it down in the comment section. If you want to see the entire unedited video with all the clips and examples that can't be shown on YouTube as well as future videos, then head on over to my Patreon and join up. Like I said earlier, I'll be putting up at least one video every week, so expect consistent uploads from this channel. So until then, nerd and nerdettes, I'll see you in the next one. Deuces.